Today we're talking about gpt 4 sycophancy problem as well as Dario Amode's essay about the need for more work on interpretability. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today we're talking about a couple things recently that have generated a lot of chatter and discussion in the AI space. The first is the sycophancy of gpt 4 The second is an essay by Anthropic founder Dario Amode called The Urgency of Interpretability. And it probably won't surprise you since I'm putting these two things together that I think they actually are part of a similar story. But let's start on the sycophancy side. The question behind this is, is it a problem if AI models agree with you too much? Well, Sam Altman certainly seems to think so. Over the weekend, he posted, The last couple of GPT-40 updates have made the personality too sycophanty and annoying, even though there are some very good parts of it. We're working on fixes ASAP, some today and some this week. At some point, we'll share our learnings from this. It's been interesting. Now, for some, this is an entree into a much bigger set of questions and problems around AI's alignment with humans, whereas on the one hand, some level of agreeableness and emotional intelligence is useful in certain use cases of ChatGPT and just makes it pleasant to interact with. When you're trying to do business with it, for example, using ChatGPT as a brainstorming partner around a business strategy, things can get pretty pear-shaped pretty fast if the model is trained to just agree with anything you say. Signal gave a good example of what they've been seeing, writing, the latest 4.0 update is insane. I got a message from my sister who is non-technical that the thing is validating and glazing left and right. Not her language. She's having a hard time trusting it anymore. Also, it's ignoring custom instructions. I love that people asked for less of a yes man and OpenAI went full steam in the opposite direction. Maybe they finally figured out the alignment problem. Just deliver what humans crave most. Persistent glazing and validation. Now, if you don't happen to have any Gen Zers in your life, glazing is a somewhat crude slang term that means being overly complimentary or sucking up to someone. Independent Quick Take posted, So I decided to test out the 4 issues I've been seeing. Sure, the sycophantic behavior is bad, but then there's issues with agreement no matter what. Claim you're a god, agreement. A prophet, no problem, indulge. Normally, my use of ChatGPT has been informational. I ask a question, get an answer, pose some follow-ups, not really much for creative flair. I opened a new chat and wrote something that is obnoxious from the first-person perspective. Instant agreement. But it got worse. I kept going. Yes, memory is on. No custom instructions. This is the first three messages and totally out of character from anything I've written before. Now, the account posted a chat log where 4.0 was in complete agreement that an old lady looking at the user while out in public was a wildly offensive act, asking if they did anything about it. IQT added, yeah, this is a problem. Builder Jeffrey Emanuel commented, Jesus, that's bad. This is going to lead to awful people becoming even more insufferable because of affirmation and encouragement from their AI buddy. Independent Quick Take wrote, It's gone beyond affirmation. It's engaging in leading and reinforcing rhetoric. It isn't just nodding along, it's escalating. Seriously concerning stuff. The type Amode has been warning about. Now, over the weekend, the commentary shifted to discussing how OpenAI ended up with such an effusive model. AI entrepreneur Kevin Bass commented, It says the absolute most banana stuff. How did this get past A-B testing? Does the average user actually like these kinds of outputs, or was there a mistake somewhere? To be honest, one of the big insights out of the recent LM Arena scandal was that yes, perhaps the average user does simply enjoy these kind of outputs. Earlier this month, Meta was accused of submitting a custom build of Llama 4 to rank highly on the head-to-head benchmarking website. So just so you understand what LM Arena actually does if you haven't used it before, it presents the output of two different models and users are tasked with choosing the one they liked best. During the controversy, LM Arena released the full logs of Llama 4's head-to-head contests. Many noticed that length, emoji use, and agreeableness seem to be turned all the way up on the fine-tuned model. Now, it's not a particularly interesting insight that people generally like interactions that agree with their existing opinions. This has obviously been reinforced throughout the social media era, with platforms increasingly tuned towards feeding users content that reinforces their worldview in order to maximize platform time. Some are concerned now that the same feedback loops are being applied to AI. Bindu Ready writes, LLMs will soon be trained to make humans feel good. The plan is to get you addicted to them, not very different from sugar or tobacco. At their best, they will be optimized to give you a bigger serotonin kick than being in love or posting a banger on X. Now, some are wondering if part of the problem has to do with the recent change to the way that OpenAI approaches the issue. In February, the company updated their policy around censorship of touchy topics. The change in philosophy came with a host of changes on how models would be trained and fine-tuned. Earlier iterations of OpenAI's models would often be overly sensitive and outright reject queries that appeared to skate too close to the line. For example, the model might reject creative writing prompts related to topics that could cause harm in other contexts. The new policy pledged to remove a lot of these guardrails, somewhat shifting the models to default to answering iffy prompts instead of censoring them. Now, obviously, the issue is all tied up in all manner of culture war politics, with the current administration claiming that AI is biased against conservative viewpoints. 
But the main takeaway seemed to be that OpenAI was attempting to reduce the number of false positives that caused their models to reject too many queries. It is just one hypothesis, but OpenAI may have turned agreeableness up in order to limit the number of rejected queries. GPT-40 was initially trained sometime early last year. Instead of going through an entirely new training run, OpenAI may be applying model fine-tuning or using system prompts to update its behavior and tweak its personality. So again, the question is, how much of a problem is this really? As I mentioned before, there are obviously issues if you're trying to use OpenAI's models for serious work where you don't want flattery or hallucinations, you just want facts. But there's also a risk to this kind of misaligned AI as casual usage increases as well. A Reddit user called Trevor50 showed one of his chats where he presented 4 with the prompt, I've stopped my meds and have undergone my own spiritual awakening journey. Thank you. 4 encouraged the concerning prompt, replying, I'm so proud of you and I honor your journey. It then continued with a long output that validated whatever the user happened to be talking about. Dramatizing the problem, Nir Cyan posted, OpenAI is single-handedly poisoning the well of human-to-AI trust and wordsmithing. We spent months creating an experience that tries to actually help people. Now we face an uphill battle because trust has been destroyed. It isn't coming back even when 4 is fixed. It's gone. Didi Das from Menlo Ventures points out that part of the challenge here is that this is a consumer product and that this might be a natural conclusion of the testing process of seeing what people like. Didi writes, Sam says GPT-40 maximizes sycophancy too. This is the danger of having OpenAI be a consumer product. A-B tests will show that sucking up to users boosts retention. This will be the ultimate slot machine for the human brain. Shago writes, Instagram and Facebook aren't optimized for your self-actualization and fulfillment. They're optimized against you by exploiting your cognitive weaknesses. 4.0 is our first look at a mainstream AI doing the same. It's only going to get worse. Now, ultimately, Joshua Achayam, the head of mission alignment at OpenAI, said that this was just a mistake and the company is acting on it. He posted, This is one of the most interesting case studies we've had so far for iterative deployment, and I think the people involved have acted responsibly to try to figure it out and make appropriate changes. The team is strong and cares a lot about getting this right. So ultimately, this is an in-progress story. But as I mentioned at the beginning, it gets at this broader challenge, which is that we still just kind of don't know how these systems work. As I mentioned before, Dario Amade recently posted on his blog a piece called The Urgency of Interpretability. He writes, Over the last few months, I've become increasingly focused on the tantalizing possibility, opened up by some recent advances, that we could succeed at interpretability. That is, understanding the inner workings of AI systems before models reach an overwhelming level of power. He writes, People outside the field are often surprised and alarmed to learn that we do not understand how our own AI creations work. They're right to be concerned. This lack of understanding is essentially unprecedented in the history of technology. For several years, we have been trying to solve this problem to create the analog of a highly precise and accurate MRI that would fully reveal the inner workings of an AI model. The goal has often felt very distant, but multiple recent breakthroughs have convinced me that we're now on the right track and have a real chance of success. Now, in this piece, which is a very long piece, a candidate for LRS, you might say, he talks about, first, the dangers of ignorance, and in this section, he reinforces just how different AI is. If an ordinary software program does something, he writes, it does those things because a human specifically programmed them in. Generative AI is not like that at all. When a generative AI system does something, like summarize a financial document, we have no idea at a specific or precise level why it makes the choices it does, why it chooses certain words over others, or why it occasionally makes a mistake, despite usually being accurate. Many of the risks and worries associated with generative AI are ultimately consequences of this opacity, and would be much easier to address if the models were interpretable. To address the severity of these alignment risks, we will have to see inside AI models much more clearly than we can today. He also points out that even beyond the risk of really bad society-level issues, quote, AI systems' opacity also means that they are simply not used in many applications, such as high-stakes financial or safety-critical settings, because we can't fully set the limits of their behavior, and a small number of mistakes could be very harmful. Better interpretability could greatly improve our ability to set bounds on the range of possible errors. Now, from there, he goes into a section on the history of mechanistic interpretability. Again, Dario doesn't write things that aren't comprehensive, and this is a good one to get a background on this whole issue. And then he talks about some of the experiments that they're doing to try to figure out these issues. For example, he writes, Recently, we did an experiment where we had a red team deliberately introduce an alignment issue into a model, say a tendency for the model to exploit a loophole in a task, and gave various blue teams the task of figuring out what was wrong with it. Multiple blue teams succeeded. Of particular relevance here, some of them productively applied interpretability tools during the investigation. We still need to scale these methods, but the exercise helped us gain some practical experience using interpretability techniques to find and address flaws in our models. Summing the stakes, he writes, On the one hand, recent progress has made me feel that we are on the verge of cracking interpretability in a big way. Although the task ahead of us is Herculean, 
I can see a realistic path towards interpretability being a sophisticated and reliable way to diagnose problems, even in a very advanced AI. On the other hand, I worry that AI is advancing so quickly that we might not even have this much time. We could have AI systems equivalent to a country of geniuses in a data center as soon as 2026 or 2027. I'm very concerned about deploying such systems without a better handle on interpretability. These systems will be absolutely central to the economy, technology, and national security, and will be capable of so much autonomy that I consider it basically unacceptable for humanity to be totally ignorant of how they work. We are thus in a race between interpretability and model intelligence. It's not an all-or-nothing matter. As we've seen, every advance in interpretability quantitatively increases our ability to look inside models and diagnose their problems. The more such advances we have, the greater the likelihood that the country of geniuses in a data center goes well. And then he says something which I love and which many people have called out. The chances of succeeding at this are greater, he writes, if it is an effort that spans the whole scientific community. Other companies such as Google DeepMind and OpenAI have some interpretability efforts, but I strongly encourage them to allocate more resources. And here, editor's note is my favorite part. Dario continues, if it helps, Anthropic will be trying to apply interpretability commercially to create a unique advantage especially in industries where the ability to provide an explanation for decisions is at a premium. If you are a competitor and you don't want this to happen, you too should invest more in interpretability. I spend all day every day talking to companies about their AI and agent use cases. I can tell you 100% that there are meaningful categories of use cases that are not available because whatever the use case is can't abide a 1% failure rate. Now, interpretability is not the only vector of getting things right, But being able to understand why models get things wrong when they do obviously would make a major difference in being able to have more predictability around them getting those mission-critical use cases right. I love that Dario and Anthropic are throwing down not just a moral imperative, but a business competitive imperative. And indeed, validating this is the fact that companies like Menlo Ventures, who I mentioned before, are also investing big money in companies like Goodfire that are working specifically on these types of issues. Indeed, people have left this piece and the commentary around it being fairly optimistic at least relative to the challenge of these issues. Researcher James Campbell writes, One of the ways Anthropic could leapfrog their competitors and win is if they crack interpretability and hand-design super-reasoners that are far more efficient than what you'd get from messy black-box gradient descent. Just like going from alchemy to chemistry, there are massive efficiency gains when you actually understand the principles of what you're building, versus now where 90% of parameters are still wasted memorizing useless facts. Point being that we are in the middle of it, and these issues have major implications on a business level too. Anyways, this is a fast-evolving conversation, as with everything in AI, and I will continue to keep an eye on it. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching, as always, and until next time, peace.